Ja, okay. <lacht> Mm -hmm. I was thinking like that. And the presentation, what about that? Grüß dich, Axel. Hallo, oh, Michael. Ja. Wunderbar. Das sieht gut aus. Der Rode kämpft ein bisschen. Okay, ja. ja. Ein Video, ich sehe das so in die Breite gezogen. Ist das bei dir auch so? Ja, uh, yeah, a little bit, but it's okay. Ja. Mhm. Yeah. And I see the RHI Magnesita um, logo as well in the background. That's important. Yeah. Okay. Ja, yeah. cool, cool. Hello. Perfect. So don't be surprised, um, I have um, added um, one slide for the technical check-in, yeah, uh, but change nothing else, you will see in a second, yeah. Yep. You know we are flexible. <laughs> yes, as always. Uh, and I think uh, what would be great uh, if, if uh, I think we, we will do the presentation and then the questions after that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe as I cannot see the questions, I don't want to dial in with a second uh, device. Uh, would be fine if you then uh, have a look at as well at the um, um, at the chat or the comments. Yeah. I will co-moderate. Don't worry. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Ah, oh, okay, Natalie Subestre. That's cool. Okay. So 13, 14, 15 people popping in, perfect. Cool. So you have a nicer background than me. <laughs> Just the official corporate background <laughs> and me a little bit the forest, the forest <laughs> to the left <laughs> and my and my heroes to the to the other side. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so three minutes um, left. Yeah, cool. So, um, so I'm looking forward very much. Hi, Oscar. Hi, nice to have you here in that in that session. Hi, Oscar. 
Yes, and uh, I think, Michael, Rudin, I would have liked to meet you all live in Amsterdam. That would have been even much more fun, especially um, as RHI Magnesita uh, has as well in Amsterdam uh, facilities. Rotterdam, yeah. Michael, sorry to correct you, Rob. Uh, Rotterdam, Amsterdam. Yes, you're right. Rotterdam. We have been there together in Rotterdam. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but maybe we have later on uh, time to share this as well. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, and and uh, I think parts of our program are anyway happening or are planned to happen. Uh, and that's why I had Amsterdam in mind. Um, we, we have some events planned initially in Rotterdam and in Amsterdam. Uh, had to shift that due to the Corona um, situation, but we're planning to go back there. Okay, so then let's see that we have maybe 98 people around here. And a lot of people uh, in this session as well have already seen a great variety of participants. That's cool. And uh, I think it's an interesting experience. Uh, and I like very much the idea of not canceling uh, the conference, of, of not postponing everything, but um, to move on, uh, especially in, in these days. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that's good to do so. Um, yeah. So, so then we wait one more minute. I hope you're all fine. Uh, it's yeah, it's half past three, so it's not the directly after lunch session, which is fine. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so hopefully Rudy will join us as well. <laughs> yeah, I can see him within the participants already, but it seems yeah. he has some issues to connect as presenter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think then then uh, Rochelle or Victoria uh, will be able to help, or we we bridge it somehow. Yeah, via chat, we make it. Hi, Marcos. Hi, hi. Welcome. Yeah. Then proposal. I think uh, as it is always with this kind of conferences, so some people pop in some on time, others uh, are still a little bit in the cyberspace or in other meetings. So uh, I think let's just let's just start uh, with our session on trains ma tra um, change management. Um, I will uh, in a, in a few seconds. I will um, show it in a in a larger display. Uh, due to the technical situation, I will then not be able to see all the chats, but uh, that's not an issue. Uh, so, uh, can you now see, Michael? Yeah, is that Thank fine you. for you? Great. Yeah, I think hopefully. And if somebody cannot see or if it's too small, then please uh, write it in the chat uh, that you can display it uh, or that you can see it. Um, so, what are we going to do uh, in this session? Uh, the session is, you see, um, Rudy, Michael, and me, we are your speakers. And uh, let's see, I go to the presentation mode. That's better. Yeah. Okay. So Rudy, Michael, and me are your speakers in that session. We prepared a transformation case or a change case, the RHI Magnesita purchasing transformation. Uh, around about now three years since we're working on that. And the story is about three waves from post-merger integration to new ways of working. Yeah, the flow of today's session is uh, first in the first part, we want to talk and or introduce a little bit RHI Magnesita so that you know uh, what is this case about, what is the company, what is the context. Then uh, we will tell you in very few slides about the transformation wave number one. We started 2017 and 18. Then uh, a little bit on transformation wave two uh, from 2018 to 2019. Then we make a cut, a short break, uh, and that is as well the opportunity for that part to have a Q&A to exchange experiences. And then in part three, we have a look at what we are currently doing as transformation wave three. 
we consolidate lessons learned and we still have time for further Q and A sessions. Yeah, so that's the flow. Uh, you see me here uh, from the speaker side, Axel Clements, HNZ, uh, Director of Capability Development Global Training Programs. Uh, and my fellow speakers are Michael Leitner, Director of Purchasing Europe, and uh, Rudi Holman as well can hopefully join us. Um, and he is responsible for uh, the global, uh, global purchasing indirect spend. So we're here in the purchasing world. Uh, maybe that's as well for some of you familiar, for others interesting to see and learn. Yeah, a technical check-in. Uh, even though I said, uh, let's have a short uh, presentation first. Um, for the interactivity, you see um, here to, to maximize the view, please double click uh, the title with the presentation. Then uh, the second to raise your hand and ask for the micro, click ask to share the to share audio and video button that should be on the right upper hand of the screen, other text, but somewhere here. And when you raise your hand, your name will appear at the bottom left. Uh, it might be that we have a small queue of questions, yeah. So please uh, stay patient. Uh, we invite you then to have later on uh, the discussion and the exchange. Uh, we let you in, uh, and I think then in the discussion we can use as well the chat function and have some interactivity. Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, so uh, now let's have a look at uh, what is RHI Magnesita about? Um, what is the company which is behind this case of change management and transformation? RHI Magnesita is the world leader in refractories and a truly global company. So now, uh, if, if Rudy is there, Rudy, please share a little bit the facts and figures uh, about what is refractories and what is RHI Magnesita. If, that's, if you're not there, then Michael, maybe you can uh, take this part over, yeah? So as Rudy is not, yeah, yeah, Michael, then please. Yes, for sure. Yeah, thanks mm -hmm. for introducing us, uh, Axel, and thanks for having the opportunity to uh, join this session today. Maybe maybe some of you are wondering uh, what is refractories. So refractories is, as you can see here, essential for a modern world. So uh, it's used mainly in the steel industry, in the uh, industry, in several industrial companies like cement industry, glass industry, and uh um several um energy and chemical uh, appliances yeah whenever we have degrees beyond uh, 1000 degrees uh, our bricks and mixes are needed to uh, produce several uh, things in the ground industry the market of uh, refractories uh, globally is about 20 billion and RHI Magnesita uh, is a, a, a combined company after a merger taking place in 2017 between RHI and Magnesita, former competitors, uh, and covering a global market share of 15%. So uh, in general, you can say there are a few big companies on the market, but uh, the clear number one is RHI Magnesita. And then there are several uh, niche players on the market uh, covering several niche products on that area. Uh, so having that said, means we are a three uh, billion, uh, almost three billion revenue company with more than 10,000 10, customers spread over a lot of countries. We have almost 14,000 employees spread over 40 countries and thereof 150 are in purchasing, also spread over several countries and regions. Uh, we have more than 100 countries shipped worldwide from uh, our 32 main production sites and have more than 70 sales offices globally. Um, I have said already that 2.9 billion is our revenue from 2019 and more than 50% of that is external spend. And this external spend is managed from our procurement team. So you can see that uh, or approximately 1% of total headcount is responsible for more than the half of the external uh, of the of the uh, um, uh, revenue. So uh, responsible for more than 1.5 billion euros. And uh, having said that, I would like to hand over back to you, Axel, to continue and give an overview about our journey. Yeah, thank you very much, Michael. 
So then let's have a look at the transformation journey. It started 2017. It's still ongoing uh, like we have in transformation um, and, and change program. We can later discuss what is the difference or is there a difference between change and transformation? Um, if we look at RHI Magnesita, uh, RHI Magnesita, as I said, um, is striving here in the purchasing department for world class. Yes, you might say that is the classical and, and common standard or phrase we find become world class. Uh, the positive thing, and there I ask you just to believe me, there is a vision and purpose. So this um, purchasing department is definitely a purpose-driven organization. Then we have a truly global company uh, after a post-merger, that means establish a cross-regional collaboration is quite crucial. And this is one of the core areas of the change. And sustainable value contribution is one of the targets for sure. We are in purchasing besides safety, besides innovation. Uh, that's always part of the story. And sustainability definitely plays a role. So we will see in the in the next uh, few minutes and then in part two, three phases of transformation. The first phase, day one readiness. So that was the merger. Then the second, consolidation and standardization in the following year and change and empowerment. As you can see just from the, from the calendar years here, uh, so that was not that much uh, on, a, on a corporate level, five-year or three-year waves. Uh, this was much faster and much more integrated. Now maybe that's uh, one of the interesting areas we later on can share. Uh, what is your experience? How long does it take? Yeah, then uh, let's have a look at the first wave. The day one readiness, um, the day one readiness uh, transformation. So here, as we said, the purchasing transformation started with the merger of two companies with different cultures, systems, and approaches. The red and the blue world. Michael will share a little bit about what this is. And uh, we're talking here about a company acting with teams in North America, from Canada through USA till um, Brazil, uh, till uh, Mexico, then a South American uh, team, then an Asia Pacific team, then a global team, then a European team. Yeah, so uh, they all together manage a spend of 1.5 billion together with the stakeholders. And um, yeah, the first thing I think here. Um, being in a merger, and I think many of you will have had that experience, um, and we had here the situation of an internal change, so bringing the teams together, and in the same time, keep the business going, uh, address and, and steer uh, uh, um, a consolidated supplier pool of the previous two companies. Yeah, So that was the challenge or one of the challenges to have that in parallel besides all the fears or the question marks the people had. Michael, if you look at that um, first phase, so um, from your point of view with regards to cultural aspects, so what were the, the main challenges uh, from your perception that uh, RHI Magnesita faced in, in that phase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe let me point out first that I would say day one readiness or day one was one of the most uh, frequently used phrases in 2017. The merger finished and the combined company started in uh, November 2017. But this was not a starting day for our journey. We started already months before to align mm -hmm. as far as it, it was possible. And as you said, yeah, the former red and blue world, yeah, which is uh, corresponding to the, the colors of the brands, yeah, we had before red, Magnesita, blue, RHI, uh, mm -hmm. were different worlds, yeah, in terms of processes, in terms of culture, in terms of philosophy, and much more. And the situation was, on the one hand, that we were expected to deliver uh, mainly synergy savings already from the very beginning. But on the other hand, as you said, Axel, we had a very uncertain situation. Yeah? So people were a little bit insecure. They were not sure what will happen within the next weeks and months that time. And we had the challenge to force cooperation in this merger, si merger situation, to have also a good and convincing change story, and be honest about risks and opportunities, but also uh, convince the people that the opportunities are higher than the risks. And as you said, different regions, yeah, 
the merger made, on, made not only sense, there are several reasons why this was a good decision, but also that we combined our footprint and presence in, in different regions. But this means also at that time that we have to learn about the cultures from several regions and, 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 and other philosophies. And uh, yeah, this was the starting mm -hmm. point and ensure that the people are working together, I would say was uh, really uh, the, the, the main challenge at the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, so many different facets of, of culture. So the intercultural aspect, the company culture, then uh, doing business uh, like it is in that industry in Brazil or in China, all these things um, had to be managed besides other things. Then let's have a look at the solution. So um, what was one piece besides all the things that were done um, as you would expect in such a merger? Um, if we zoom in here on uh, what we did together uh, to, to prepare the people to go live on day one, uh, we set up a global day one readiness training program uh, delivered in the USA, in South America, in Europe and in China for the respective teams. Um, where we worked on real life negotiation cases. So from the very beginning, people were trained. And on top of that, um, the teams, or we used the training um, for the first time to bring the teams together, the newly teams. Yeah. So that was somewhat delicate, but for me as well, impressing to see how open and ready um, the people and individual were to cooperate um, and to connect. Yeah. Michael, from your point of view, so what uh, you joined that, so what was specific with this global day one um, readiness training? Yeah, first of all, I would like to point out that it was the right and the good decision to bring in an external view. And with Axel, we had really, a, a, on the one hand, a supportive coach and trainer, but on the other hand, also a challenging one, what was very good at that time. And as you can see here, there were many other initiatives. Yeah, And this is just an abstract. And uh, on the one hand, we received only very limited data. Yeah, There were restrictions from merger control, it's clear. Uh, we also were forced to build up an organization at that time where we have completely different setups uh, on the blue and the, uh, on, on the red side. So we take out the good things from both sides and these were the fundamentals. Based on that, as you said correctly, we created this day one readiness training, which is a customized program. And we have spent several days in advance to set up and think about uh, where can we capture savings on the one hand, but also how can we establish and build up the supplier relationships and, the, and steer the supplier pool, as mentioned before. And the good thing was, this was the first time where we met together, um, cross-region, and also uh, the leaders were involved and people met first time and exchanged and shared their experiences and approaches. And uh, with this external support, it was also possible to um, nailed down some concrete actions and measures which prepared us to be ready on capturing first initiatives or start this synergy savings initiatives already from the first day onward. Mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. one additional comment on that, what maybe also related to the challenges. Uh, the challenges was not only that the role of the buyer within RHI Magnesita would have changed at time, which was the case. It's also that, and for those who know the procurement, uh, um, role, uh, even the procurement role in general is changing. Yeah? It's becoming much more tactically and strategic compared to operational and tactically. So this is also an additional thing where it was good to get also an outside view on that and think about uh, what can we do and how can we based on real life negotiation cases prepare to be ready on day one. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Michael. Yeah. So if we conclude here, so this phase of a wave of transformation was really a tough one, a very tough turnaround. Um, and now let's uh, look at the next phase. Yeah, around about one year later. So then it was about consolidation and standardization. Uh, still as um, RHI Magnesita is a stock listed company, very much financial driven uh, stakeholder and shareholder expectations are there, then uh, a tough market situation. So uh, the next wave uh, was uh, here, the focus of that was lay the foundation for a world class purchasing organization um, and to develop that spirit and, and really 
um, yeah, get get the grip. So um, and and that means as well to build a new culture based or coming from what was there. So to take the good parts of the previous worlds and really have a have a good blend um, of that to look into the future. Um, yeah, and uh, again, yeah, I think yes, uh, it was as well about synergy savings or, or other things. But it's it's not only about savings, as we said. Your company is very much innovation driven. Um, you have to handle uh, tough markets, yeah, raw materials, for example, or global categories with international logistics categories and so on. So it's quite complex. Yeah, if we look at if you look at that. Um, um, Michael, so together with, with the next step, we, we developed the so-called purchasing academy as, as one core piece um, to bring the people together. And there we trained teams. Here, the North America team uh, was one training group, then the South America team, one training group, the new European teams and the new Asia Pacific team. So we had uh, those uh, groups. Um, and then we had a, two, a three times two day training module with homework in between. Yeah, from your point of view, um, what was the, Michael, what was the, the key idea of, of having such a purchasing academy besides qualifying and training the people? Yeah, I would say um, these phases, maybe just as a starting point, are for sure not the uh, completely separated. We cannot say phase one, phase two, phase three. Yeah, there was a clear overlapping uh, period, and uh, during this phase one, business continuity was in focus to ensure that the processes are running. That time we had different or separate uh, ERP systems running beside that. And then uh, we had to gain, as mentioned before, the low-hanging fruits, I would say, and capture the first savings already. But then, as, as you said correctly, it was time to do the next step and think about how can we set up for the future. And besides some operational topics and IT-driven landscape topics and uh, our overall topic of synergy savings, we wanted also to do the next step in creating a purchasing community. And uh, one of the main... Uh, um, messages uh, after the uh, combination of the two companies was to empower the regions and also to empower the people. And this was the starting point to say, okay, let's also empower the people in that way that, the, that we bring the teams together and working on several uh, uh, topics and issues right now and thinking about how can we uh, make purchasing better in terms of uh, speed, in terms of uh, any other innovational drivers, as you mentioned before, to do things differently, to maybe also um, um, yeah, think about a, a different uh, perspective from purchasing at that time. And with the mm -hmm. Purchasing Academy, I can remember we spent several days together and same here, it's not a, it's not a standard training program. We customized it, to, customized it together uh, with Axel. Uh, it was not the intention to only train purchasing skills only. We also, as you can see here mainly um, uh, in this overview, there were a lot of topics like 4.0 or new ways of working or also uh, make more understandable the role of procurement and why is it so important to uh, satisfy the internal stakeholders and demand responsibles and so on. So uh, after the first initial meetings we had during the day one readiness phase, this was, I would say, the next step on the uh, on the journey uh, to really think about uh, where can we exactly uh, improve um, our setup in purchasing and this was also well recognized by all team members and uh, let me point out that 90 out of 150 buyers joined this first session which was a uh, uh, three modules program with two days each and also a good networking session. And this is was really, I would say, uh, the real starting point of when we have seen one combined purchasing community. And mm -hmm. we learned a lot from each other uh, mm -hmm. in, the, in that time. Okay. Thank you, Michael. And um, yeah, to highlight that, so uh, the people brought their practical cases and uh, during the training and between the training, they worked on their cases, presented them in the training. So it was not the, the, the classical one, but we are very much involving the people 
um, that they show up and, and bring their cases and share this with the peers. And usually I do want, uh, I like not to have uh, the, the leaders in the training room. Here it was different. So Rudy and Michael acted as well as co-trainers. And we had the HR function in the core team and uh, the HR function, the colleagues there uh, joined the first session and as well talked about change management. Yeah. Okay, I think that is what we talked about. So uh, now we have uh, here yeah, showed you the first two waves of, um, of the purchasing academy. Now I minimize my screen. Yeah, let's see. And uh, then let's have a look at um, what are your, your questions um, or your, um, your aspects. So, uh, Loretta, hopefully that works. Yeah, so we had a question or a comment from Loretta. Maybe you try again. <laughs> I thought I let you in. If if not, if if, uh, if 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 we already overwhelmed you or overbought you, I never know. <laughs> if we get no feedback, yeah, feel free to to use the chat um, as well. Uh, th that we can uh, show what what are your your questions uh, or what what are your thoughts uh, from what you've just heard. So what are we doing now? <laughs> are we alone, Michael? <laughs> can't, can't be that we have answered all questions already. No, no, no. Yeah, maybe if, if there's nothing technical, and I think uh, I wouldn't expect that. Um, so then, then let's do the following. I propose uh, then we start the second part yeah, of, the, of the story. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we, we after that have even more questions. Yeah, let's do this. Ah, okay, Marcos. So, now Marcos, ah, that works. Hi, Marcos. Hello. Ah, uh, hello, everybody. I, I tried Hi, to join, Marcus. but it was not working. Um, uh, Question. I'm, I'm working for Bosch in the purchasing department as well. Uh, my responsibilities is communication. And we did a kind of similar project, not a merger, but um, a consolidation project some years ago. And for me, it's always important to, to include the colleagues, not only the, let's say, purchasing guys. They're really doing the purchasing because a lot of people working for purchasing and in internal departments. So what you did, um, or what was... Um, the methods you choose uh, to to bring them all together, not only to to bundle um, savings, whatever. So really bring all colleagues in the central departments together and make them to a team. Um, not only saving money, so creating teams, creating an understanding for we are now one company, we are now one central purchasing department, and next to saving money is uh, maybe having a good time or um, yeah being a big family so and we had i think I michael can do, talk, tell that in detail so definitely we had fun so we just showed the agenda with the content piece yeah imagine but i cannot disclose <laughs> everything we did but definitely that's why we had the evening sessions and two day sessions uh and i was so happy those days when we could fly to to go to brazil or to go to to the states yeah so uh that was that was fun not only from the location but michael i think you can share a little bit more what what did we really do to to build the community and to have fun and bring the people together marcus good question let me answer in a two step approach for the answer i fully agree on you that we should not reduce purchasing always to savings only but you can imagine that during the merger this was a main driver of initiating all the program but not only and we had a lot of uh, initiatives started which at the end uh, 
reduced costs, but also brought in some innovation and so on. And I would say this day one readiness trainings and even the purchasing academy were the starting point where only the procurement guys came together and discussed and exchanged and brainstormed and thought about how can we attack some of the topics. And I would say this is, as we called it in our overall project, yeah, the maturity level one, yeah, the brainstorming and idea finding. And we had in the background the software and the PMO and the community where we discussed for sure with all our stakeholders. Yeah, During the maturity level two phase, we needed to verify our assumptions and uh, maturity level three level. Yeah, I'm sure you know that already. Uh, we discussed about how our implementation roadmap could look like. And we always tried that this is not only a cost driving project from procurement side, uh, rather than involving all the stakeholders and really ensure to have also sustainability. So I would say we had on the one hand, the quick wins, which were coming mainly from the day one readiness training, where we really uh, forced and invited the vendors to give a commitment from their side to participate from the bigger cake they have, because at the end, the, the spend was doubled when we combined from both sides. Uh, and and uh, on the other hand, and this is the second answer to, uh, to my question, when this first exercise and this initiation phase was done, for sure we had also, um, I would say, a kind of roadshow where with all the findings and learnings we created out of the Purchasing Academy, uh, we went out to our stakeholders. Mainly that's the plans, yeah, we have um, uh, only in Europe where I'm responsible for 18 locations where we explain the, in detail the ideas and so on. And I just can confirm what you said. It is crucial that you really involve them already from the very beginning. And this is what we have done that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, and, and if I, thank you, Markus. If, and if I um, may add uh, what we did or, or what, what is special here, uh, what I think is good practice is that that the the purchasing academy is um, approved by the board, so it has this very high attention uh, from the from the senior leadership team. Um, I think this is as well important. And when we set this up, so the the CPO is is under the COO uh, at RHI Magnesita, and uh, we had as well information and and their support. And that was visible uh, for the for the participants as well. Uh, that this is not just a training, but this is a high um, um, there's a high awareness, high expectation, and and an investment. Yeah, if I may say with all respect, uh, RHI Magnesita is quite aware of the money, how they spend their money. We always have tough negotiations about that. Yeah, and I think uh, yeah, especially if you think about such a company, yeah, which is thinking so carefully about where to invest and, and investing in, in, in such a uh, global event, uh, but they did it. Yeah? And I think that this was as well for the people um, a, a privilege uh, to participate. And uh, if I may add, to be honest, yeah, we, we had yeah, as well the situation, uh, sad situations where we had some uh, colleagues leaving the company, which just were there for the first uh, module. Uh, and, and I think it was not just uh, everything totally nice. Uh, I think to be honest, to be authentic and to address that we have people in the group which will leave the company after the merger and still are in the training, but will not come to the second module or the third. Yeah, I think that's how it was. And we did our best to be honest, transparent and to integrate uh, the new ones. Uh, and in the same time to show our respect to those who were leaving. Yeah, Absolutely. I think, yeah. I can fully agree. And Axel, maybe also worth to mention that we built that academy up, that it was nothing where anybody was forced to join. All the employees were very happy that they had the chance uh, to do so. And we also created a certificate at the end. And what Axel mentioned already, we had the full support for sure from the senior vice president procurement, but also from our CEO who made a video message at the beginning. and. Uh, maybe Axel touched it a bit before. We had three modules, two days each, and in between, in, in these modules, the procurement guys met. Yeah, but in between, we had some pre-work sessions for each module. All the real cases we discussed there, and all the ideas which have been generated, had to be discussed. Uh, to come back also to the question from Markus, uh, to discuss with the stakeholders and and demand responsibles in between. 
And a lot of these ideas brought up during the academy by using the knowledge from, from, from other guys and other categories uh, responsibles uh, have brought us for, forward extremely at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And not to forget, uh, what, what did we as well uh, to, to engage and to connect the people? I, I just mentioned we had training teams, local training or regional training teams. So the North American team, the South American team, but we connected them. And how we, did we do that? Uh, at the end of the module of each or of, of the module, the, the South American team, for example, uh, they, they uh, produced a small video. Uh, related to a training topic. Uh, and then that was the virtual handshake. Um, so they, they just did some kind of theater, took the smartphone, produced a small um, a movie. That was the virtual handshake. Uh, the other teams did this as well. And we created their, their movie where we see all the, the, the variety. And I think as RHI Magnesita is a truly not only global, but diverse company. Yeah, uh, I think this was as well a strong sign uh, when the people saw uh, the power, the richness of people uh, to make that, yeah, to make that happen. Mm. Yeah. And Axel, as you said, uh, or as we said before, we trained and discussed also about the perception and the standing of procurement. Uh, yes, we grew and developed our purchasing community at that time, but we are also using it, our Tri Magnesita, an employee app, which was also implemented during the, the start of the combined company. And this is a, a really a great coverage. And uh, most of the employees uh, um, are checking that app on a daily basis, almost, I would say. And this gives us also really a good opportunity for self-marking reasons and to show what purchasing is doing. And not only to boast we are doing a purchasing academy, but also bring in subtop subtopics there. And I would say this was also a good step in uh, increasing the perception and the standing of the purchasing organization within the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, then um, proposal. Let's have a look at um, what we do. So the second uh, part of the um, of the journey. Yeah. So after two waves of successful transformation, there was some time for vacation, uh, and then we initiated the next step towards world class purchasing. So that's now the third wave. Uh, we will have a look at in the next minutes. Yeah, um, RHI Magnesita purchasing is now in the situation of unleashing constant change. Yeah, I took this with intent. So I think uh, the, the, the um, uh, day one readiness and the others were more, I would not say imposed, but more predefined. Uh, now we are here at the stage and I think that is the large difference. And coming back to Marco's question, I think you will, maybe you find here even more ans answers how to engage uh, the, the, the participants and not only have a top-down or one-way um, way of communication and, and learning, but really to empower the people that they take over um, ownership, responsibility of, of the content. I think that is the biggest shift we, we are now doing. So um, how does that work? And, and um, how do we, um, what is our approach to drive the cooperation um, of connected and agile leaders, of connected and agile teams, and um, have the global and regions uh, in a very strong and, and working link? Yeah. So now, um, RHI Magnesita here is um, at the stage of, um, yeah, of to master the complexities of a global player. Uh, to balance standardization, and if you know about raw materials or other things, uh, here we have very difficult categories. The markets are quite difficult. And on top, again, stretch targets financially, safety, uh, innovation, and not only the savings. Yeah, then uh, we, we had uh, trainings planned in Rotterdam and in, uh, in Amsterdam um, for this spring. And then COVID-19 popped in. Um, it does not only uh, impact the supply chain of the company, but it impacted definitely our program. A lot of my other clients then uh, just canceled uh, the training programs we had scheduled. Um, but RHI Magnesita chose another way to handle the situation. Michael, so what is the RHI Magnesita approach to uh, handle the COVID-19 situation with regards to our program? 
Yeah, happy to say that we got the full commitment from the management and you can imagine that for sure we discussed for several initiatives and projects where we can cut costs, where we can postpone and delay whatever. And uh, for sure also for the academy where we decided to continue in a slightly different way. We will talk about that in a minute. Uh, we decided to continue. Yeah, uh, for sure we needed to adjust. Yeah, because uh, of travel restrictions. Initially it was planned to have uh, two modules that time for the advanced group, where we are going into more detail in a minute. And initially it was planned to have one section in May and one in October. And in between the teams are working on on something. But uh, we decided now to start in October and postpone only the second part into 2021. But as people is one of the strategic pillars from our corporate strategy, and uh, I really like that, and that people are really, and that the company is really investing in, in developing and education of people, uh, it was decided that we continue with this project, and we also got approved the budget to continue in that way. That we did a, a virtual kickoff, uh, first webinars, where we uh, did some parts of what initially was planned to do uh, in person in the May in the May event already in advance yeah and how that looks like and so on we will share you then later on when talking about the approach more in detail mm -hmm. yeah um here i think if, if what what did we do here so uh target is then um as well or one of the main targets to develop attract and retain talent and future leaders so you have new people you have people which are still in the company but maybe have the experience and we have a lot of experienced people as well so a good blend of uh, people which are fresh from the university fresh coming in from other companies but as well people which are 20 or more years um, in the predecessors uh, so the the earlier companies and now part of IHI Magnesita so um, when it comes here to what is the approach to the second wave of our purchasing academy uh, the focus is to trust uh, that the co-creation we have there of the teams, that networking and self-organization is crucial in these days. And that is the key idea of uh, the, the, the transformation things we are currently doing. And that's why we have here in the headline, unleashing constant change. So unleashing constant change means it's not driven top down, not by some people who do the um, purchasing development, but it's really in the hand of, um, of the teams. Um, so here we have uh, first to have a, a good coverage um, of, of the entire purchasing organization, we have still a base course to qualify the local purchasers. So uh, key message here, the investment on the company is not only on the high potentials, but really to respect all the people who are working in the operational area, which are quite important. So it's not just the global, the high fly and the strategic guys, everyone gets trained. Uh, and as well here, those who are local, uh, located in the in the different sites. Yeah. Um, then we have as a second stream a purchasing academy advanced. Um, and here I said just develop, attract, retain talent and future leaders. So the people which can participate that program and it's more than 50 of, of uh, the community, they are selected. They are selected by the purchasing leaders. So it is something special. It is some kind of award to be part of that training group. And um, as you can see here, it's uh, a cr we have cross-regional teams. So this time it's not a North American team or a South American team. This time it's a blend uh, in our training groups where we put teams together, where the people from North America, South America, Europe, Asia Pacific work in nine teams uh, through different time zones, through different categories on specific tasks. Yeah, so what is the key idea, Michael, to have that kind of change, switching from regional training groups to cross-regional training groups? I can see that Rudy is in now, just asking if you can hear us and giving him the opportunity to stay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Can you hear then, Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Then, then uh, just one second, yeah. Just one second, Rudy. Okay, so then, uh, Rudy, feel free to speak up. Exactly. Yeah, so you should have the mic. Otherwise, for sure, I can do. But if you can hear us, Rudy, please step in. 
Yeah, so Rudy, feels free to to interrupt us. Yeah, and uh, then we we manage that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Otherwise, I can start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you said, Axel. Yeah, we had the Purchasing Academy uh, base course in 2018 and 19. And based on the good feedback we received internally and also from some stakeholders and the overall satisfact satisfaction level was that high, we decided co to continue. And as you mentioned, we did the base course again in a slightly changed version, but comparable to what we have done before for those team members who have not joined the first session. But in addition, we created this advanced group where we have more than 50 people and it's not only the leaders, there are for sure, again, we brought together the leaders. But also, uh, I would say the more senior guys from procurement team and uh, specialists and experts in their categories. You can imagine that procurement is completely different when you are responsible for raw materials compared to MRO items or services or energy, whatever. And the idea behind these uh, mixed teams was uh, to lever the synergy of the diversity. Yeah, we said, uh, let's bring together the teams. Yeah, let's uh, make a team uh, represented by North America, South America, China, and, and, and Europe. Yeah, and also try to balance the diversity to have male and female in, in, a, in a balanced way in the teams and more experienced and uh, or experienced and more experienced uh, teams. And the idea was, according to the, to the, to the strategy and the, the behavioral rules of our company, to empower the people. That means we had a meeting on director's level with our senior vice president purchasing, where we talked about what are the crucial topics which will bring us forward. Not really surprisingly, what you see here, these 12 icons, yeah, best coast country sourcing, digitalization, global business services, purchasing, service level agreement, and much more. These are all topics yeah, where on the one hand, we it's it's not that we are starting at zero there. Yeah, We have already, I would say, a quite acceptable and good maturity level. But to doing the next step and bringing us better or towards best in class, uh, we said it's not too top down and hierarchy based uh, tell the people what to do. Uh, on this level of uh, senior and experienced buyers, we asked them, uh, we made the setup before of the team members. So we had a kickoff uh, a few weeks ago where they have seen the first time that they were in a group. And we asked them to think about what topic is of interest for them. And then they aligned via Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Meanwhile, we use it as our main platform to also be uh, faster and more structured in that direction. And the teams uh, then discussed internally via web sessions uh, which topic to deal with. And then they had an application process. Yeah, So they had to explain clearly what they expect to do, why they are interested in the topic, and so on. And on director's level, yeah, so each director from each Europe together with our senior vice president purchasing, we made a kind of jury where we said, OK, according to the application, we try that every group can work on the topic they're interested in. And from now on, they're working on the topics. And it's, uh, again, uh, an agile approach where we say it's not that we are defining the outcome and what we are achieving should be the results. No, we as directors, together with uh, Axel again from, from, uh, to support from external side, are, are coaches and owners of these projects and are doing, on a monthly basis, coaching ses sessions. But this is only to give a guidance and support if they if if they if they need. Yeah. Uh, mainly the idea is that the groups themselves are working on on the achievements there, and the virtual kickoff has been done already. And the final presentation of the outcome when we hopefully can meet in person during our first module in October, and there will also uh, be a pitch there. So all the groups are also in a competition. And it's really good to see when we talk on director's level to each other that the people are highly motivated to deal with those topics and uh, see that they can shape the future of procurement at RHI Magnesita and not only get those what to do uh, top down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And if I may add, um, so so one of the challenges in in this in the current phase is um, first that uh, due to the COVID nineteen virus, uh, there there's a lot of troubleshooting going on. So 
um, we, we did not put that much um, pressure like we would have done in other times with regards to progress. Uh, we moderated a little bit. Still, there is a clear performance expectation. There, uh, there's the opportunity um, of, of um, uh, coaching and all that kind of stuff. So to enable the teams, we trust in the teams. Uh, and it's interesting to see, for example, I think there are some topics which are quite, I would say, standard. Yeah, so interesting how they conceptualize it. Others are, for example, here about new ways of working. So uh, the teams think about how can we adjust and what is our idea to tackle future challenges which are already tangible by changing our ways of working. And I think this is quite exciting because then the teams present present their ideas instead of having a classical training approach where the trainer says something, has something prepared, you have an exercise, you have a reflection. So this here enriches, uh, yeah, and this is a, a, a true uh, contribution from the teams. And we're quite curious and, and um, excited to see uh, what, the, what the success will be. I think uh, it, it, that's quite, quite um, interesting. Yeah. Again, um, it's not only about the purchasing academy, as we said uh, here in, in such a company, there are a lot of things going on in parallel besides the troubleshooting here to, to handle the supply chain disruptions. You are currently working on an um, SRM platform implementation. You have working capital initiatives. So I think this is, from my point of view, one of the biggest changes when we talk about change management, that you have much faster and much more parallel uh, change cycles uh, than in the in the previous years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. A again, the trial to bring in Rudy, as I can see him now. Hopefully it works now. Can you hear us? At least we cannot hear him. Mm, seems not working. So it's good that we have at least one of you there. <laughs> yeah. Rudy, we cannot hear you. We just can see you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I continue. Meanwhile, hopefully, Rudy can manage the technical issues. Yeah. So to answer your question, Axel, yes, and there are much more initiatives ongoing right now. As I mentioned before, the role of procurement is changing. Yeah. We're not talking about the, the merger anymore. We do not have blue and red worlds. We have RHI Magnesita with a good uh, stabilized purchasing community, meanwhile. And after consolidation and stabilization of the processes in the last two years, we are now ready to do the next big step. And as you said, this mm -hmm. is not a transformation, it's more really a change process where we're implementing, just to give one example, and there are much more initiatives, an SAM platform, which is also a huge project and uh, will take us one and a half years to implement uh, supplier lifecycle and uh, sourcing modules, contracting, and also catalog platforms and so on. This bring, uh, will bring procurement on the next level and mainly increase efficiency and speed and should also free up resources to focus more on the tactic from tactical to, to strategic topics. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's also good to mm -hmm. make sure that even here the company uh, give it, give, uh, gave a commitment that for sure we needed uh, to postpone parts of the project, but even here we were not forced to stop completely. Uh, we uh, postponed part of the project, but uh, the main, the main uh, core uh, modules will be implemented this year as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Maybe and if I sorry uh -huh. to interrupt you, and maybe we have to mention that maybe you can see in these team challenges with digitalization and implementation of the digital procurement solution, we have also made a group here, as we called it, as a kind of speedboat, supporting the standard project team here with initiating that and accelerating that a bit because we all know speed is key and speed is of importance. And uh, this is also good to see already after a few weeks that there are a lot of good ideas bottom up, how we can move forward and also get the acceptance, not only on the procurement side, but also on the stakeholder side. 
Okay. Thank you very much. And if I may add, um, Michael, so green purchasing uh, CO2 um, reduction. Yeah. So now we are getting, I would say again, we have classical purchasing topics like what are the sourcing regions or the, the IT solutions or benchmarking. Yeah? So the classical stuff or total cost of ownership. Um, I think not to underestimate green purchasing. So you're an industrial company, you're a manufacturer. So we're not talking about just buying other kinds of office supplies or doing something like that. We're talking here really, and, and you have seen in the first slide, it's high temperature applications besides others. So industrialized processes, um, which are very much technical driven. Um, and RHI Magnesita here, the purchasing teams are really looking for tangible concepts to reduce uh, the carbon footprint and all these things. Yeah, so I think this is not only from, from the organizational development, but from the content side. And this change here is very much content driven. Uh, that's quite exciting to have this kind of, of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah, one, one learning from my side, um, yeah, as, as I mentioned, as the sourcing markets are quite tight in some categories, in some areas, uh, it is as well about revisiting specifications and thinking about, okay, do we have to accept a market situation with only a few uh, players where we really, where it's hard to negotiate or what can we do to, to adjust specifications together with the R&D department and the product development without losing safety, quality and everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And final comment on that, uh, referring also to Marco's question from, from before. And especially in these projects, I would say in almost all of these projects, we have an extended team. Yeah. So the procurement guys, yeah. Uh, from from all the regions are driving that and are in the driver's seat. But especially if you're talking about CO2, this is one of our main goals as well in our corporate strategy uh, to support on that by using secondary raw material and, and other initiatives. And uh, we are in very close cooperation with the relevant project teams there. And uh, to ensure that this is not a purchasing only initiative, but has a, a much wider range of visibility and, and acceptance. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, then to conclude, so what are the lessons learned so far? Because our journey is not um, not ready yet, uh, but I think all already exciting stuff. Yeah, just the, the first three waves and, and, and we're just in the midst of the, the third wave. Um, so from our point of view, um, when we talk about Transformation, and I, I prefer to use transformation, um, even though there's a huge overlap com, um, between change management and transformation. I would like to emphasize that from our understanding, transformation means to bring an organization or here the purchasing um, department to a higher level. And um, this by, by doing things differently, yeah, because we, we experience more and more uh, we do not get more people, uh, but we might get more projects. We might get more tasks. So the intensity is increasing and the complexity is increasing. So um, how can we handle that? And we have seen only um, investing in optimizations or in, in increase of efficiencies. Uh, there's an end to it. Um, and if you really want to bring uh, the, the people, the organization, the company to another level of performance um, by the way you do it and the results, both is important, um, then it requires a true transformation on an ongoing base, um, which means in dedicated steps, like we've seen here, it requires content. Yeah, so here in the purchasing community, uh, specific topics, category management or how to play the international markets and so on. It requires visible leaders. So it's not only here our participants or the purchasing teams, but Michael, Rudy and their colleagues have as well to arrange as a global team um, how they steer and lead people from totally different areas. And, and, and they are themselves totally different. Uh, and it's a tough business. And then really not talking about empowering people, but empowering people. And yes, um, sometimes you're surprised. Sometimes you might be disappointed. Uh, but if you take it uh, serious, that's the risk or the, the, the investment in people you really have to do. 
Um, yeah, and, and the three layers uh, from our point of view, if you consolidate that, is first activate uh, the people like we've seen, in, inform them. So the quality of information by the leaderships, what's going on in the company, what to expect and all that kind of stuff from an entire company perspective, but as well in the day-to-day -day contact is quite crucial then motivate the people. We experience that, especially in these Corona days where there's so much uncertainty and nobody of us knows what will happen in two months and three months and six months. Um, still, we keep on going and keep on enabling people. The first thing was um, here training the classical way, even though we did it quite interactive and, and homework between the modules and we had a lot of fun, all that kind of stuff. Here, the true enablement comes by allow the people, challenge them, they want to be challenged um, and give them real tasks which they design and which they pitch. Yeah. Um, this is one of the key ingredients um, and then um, embrace the next challenge. Yeah. So if you think about 2017, post-merger is quite a huge task. Then the next step to consolidate uh, and then the next step here to go to self-organization. Yeah, those are really big changes. Um, from my perception, I like to work very much with RHI Magnesita because there is the openness, the openness to say, okay, now we have been successful. Um, uh, with what we had to do this time. Now let's look for the next challenge, whatever it is. And that is, yeah, for me, the big transformation. And, and that's if you talk about unleash change. Yeah, so uh, that is the biggest change I could see, um, how the people have changed, the leaders have changed, the, the whole attitude. Um, yeah, and uh, I think one example yeah, we did here, so you, you might know those things like um, MBTI or disk profile. So, for example, in this round, all the, the, the teams, the training teams, which, which together run a challenge, uh, they shared uh, their personal or their individual profile and they reflected about what is the impact, uh, what to take into account when they cooperate. Yeah, so we give it very much into the hands um, of, of the teams. Yeah, and if you have, have that situation, then we, we, we see a lot at the moment uh, emphasis on purpose-driven organizations of adaptive and, and connected organizations. So yes, uh, you need a clear purpose. Um, and here you see just the four building blocks of the RHI Magnesita team. So the purchasing vision is to act customer focused and innovatively, is to have open decision making in a respectful environment, is to operate cross-functionally, collaboratively and pragmatically. Yeah, so RHI Magnesita is very much hands-on in a positive sense. And yes, always looking at the results, performance driven and, and accountable. Yeah. And uh, there are much more things uh, below that, um, but that's what really are the, the three streams to really empower the people, the entire organization and create um, a, a real world-class purchasing function. Yeah. So that's a little bit the story um, by now. Uh, so we, we are still working on that uh, and we still have fun. Hopefully in October we go to Dubai, but uh, let's see. Uh, at the moment we are carefully and optimistic, uh, but we keep on going. And uh, if anything should change, then we will adjust and will continue under, under other conditions as well. Yeah? So these are the three waves of purchasing transformation at uh, RHI Magnesita. So then hopefully uh, this time, uh, if we go to the panel. <laughs> Actually, we have one question in the chat already. Yeah, Wanda, Wanda. I would like yeah. to refer on that because yeah. to, to share finally my lessons learned from the whole journey. Uh, mm -hmm. It's telling us, and I fully agree on that, uh, in creating change, uh, it's important to give people a task to do immediately. At the mm -hmm. meaningful, of course, and I fully agree on that. Yeah, uh, when you're empowering the people, and when you talk about change and transformation, it should not be theoretic. Yeah, it should be that you make people doing something. And this is exactly if you would ask me what is my lessons learned of the last two years, I would say the trust, the trust to the people, 
and uh, do not underestimate the people. And I can remember, Axel, maybe you, maybe you know that, but two years ago when we started to create the Purchasing Academy, this was one of your starting commands. Don't underestimate the willingness and the knowledge of your people. And we challenged them and uh, it was good that we did it that way. Yeah? There were no doubts from my, my side, just to be clear. But when the people now, especially in these challenges, seeing that they are not only asked to do what is uh, provided from us or uh, um, yeah, delegated or whatever, but they really can shape the future, then it's much more easier. And also, I think where most of you will agree that transformation never stops and ends, yeah, Who's, who stops to become better has stops to be good. I would say the environment is changing mm -hmm. faster and faster. And therefore, it's so important that you um, always uh, thinking about uh, what you said, Axel, how you can do different. Yeah, speaking yeah. Uh, speaking in the words of Peter F. Drucker, yeah, doing the right things is much more important for sure, also to be efficient, but doing the right things. And this is especially what we would like to find out by involving the people there. And I always tell to my team members, uh, think big. Yeah, maybe we have not done in the past that big. Yeah, think big. Start small, also important to get not frustrated at the beginning, and but then act fast. And this is uh, mm -hmm. so in, in dealing with the challenges right now. Yeah, thank you, Michael. And um, yeah, if um, yeah, I would say nothing, nothing more to add. Uh, if I'm thinking about uh, Victoria, gave a hint in the chat. Yeah, so if if you press and I invite and encourage you again, um, yeah, please um, press ask to share audio and video button. Um, yeah, and that, that's fine. Um, ah, the hard part. Okay, wonder. So, uh, if uh, yeah, if uh, if we cannot make you to speak up. Ah, here we go. So let's see. And maybe it. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, cool. Hi, hi, wonder. Hi. I hey. Was chatting. I might as well join the conversation, because what I found interesting about the story is the power of getting people involved, as you just rightly said, Michael, and it's the same thing I see every time I look at a successful change. But I find fascinating that the most difficult part is what you said, Michael, for the leader, is to trust the people, mm -hmm. to trust that they'll have a good idea, that they'll stay on target, that they're motivated, that they're aligned with the direction, that they won't go way off budget, that they'll do plan, that the constraints are actually appropriate for the cause and kind of moving forward. So I'm curious about that because I don't think it's that you didn't trust people. I think it's this worry about losing control. At least that's my view. So how did you manage that <laughs> loss of quote unquote control from your point of view? I, I agree with you that this is a challenge and especially in the current circumstances and the difficult environment where we are acting almost all by us from our team globally from home offices since eight or nine weeks already and we are not fully back in the offices. This was also a big change because I would not say we were conservative, yeah, but we had only very limited home office days before. Meanwhile, the complete team is acting, I would say, out of control as, as they are away. And yeah, how to manage that? Uh, I think uh, you need uh, to give the trust to people and you need uh, to be patient. Yeah, If you want to speed up and accelerate, uh, even if it sounds a little bit crazy, you need to be patient and <clears throat> it depends. And if you have a, a good spirit in the team, yeah, and we always try with the academy and other initiatives too, to have some role models, not only by the leader, this is a must. Yeah, As a leader, you must be a role model, how you are acting, I, for example, with my boss in the same way, uh, then it's al already a good starting point. But uh, then it takes time. And I would say after two years, when I look back, we have done a very good move in the right directions. But there is still a long way to go to come there where you say we are fully agile. We are fully have uh, done our transformation. And uh, yeah. Trust and also accept mistakes. I think this is also something what you not should only live, for sure you should live it, but also tell the people. Yeah, We had uh, in some areas on procurement in our side, 
so called, called coffee sessions where we discussed with the people which mistakes they made and really promoted to show what they made wrong yeah just to engage them to make mistakes or much more to uh, take decisions and learn out of that and it, it's difficult for some to come out from the comfort zone but when they see my colleague is doing so uh, it's just a question of time un until they do as well and as axel said a final comment on that you will always have guys who are not comfortable with this situation it's for sure during the merger situation we had a, a normal fluctuation yeah but those who are willing and are trusting in the leaders as well they are going to journey with us hopefully this answers a bit your question it does and i think it's easy to say it after the fact and extremely difficult to do it in the moment agreed and you. that's we we need more tactics on how and i presume you have those i will leave them for <laughs> someone else to come join thank you <laughs> thank you wonder yeah thank you very much and if i may add yeah so here in in this situation we have to, uh, i think what what it means to trust the people um or, or, or to think about control we're talking about teams in in, in china we're talking about uh, a very if i look at the age yeah if i may say <laughs> yeah in brazil it's quite a relatively young even though we have very experienced people but in on average a relatively young population in other regions it's different so i think for the leaders uh it's it's not just say okay i i loosen a little bit the control it's not that easy yeah so i think uh, as well there 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 are many and that's my learning if you work internationally there are many ways to be successful so you have to be aware of what is necessary uh, and i think to to uh, to uh, think in other terms than control um does not release a leader from my point of view to be accessible to be in touch uh, to be together with the team yeah so i think it it um uh, i think from my point of view a, a good leadership is as well to spend enough time with your team not telling them only what to do or or not controlling them but to be in touch with them and to have this kind of discussion so to act as a coach for example of your team yeah and that might be or this is different from a classical hierarchically um approach yeah mm -hmm. Axel, maybe I may add one point. Yes. When you say you need to be touchable or you need to touch them, I would say you you need to what what uh, Wanda uh, posted before. You need to provide concrete tasks, and I think you should also show that there is an outcome which is touchable. I want to give an example. In the past, we had the KPIs. We have corporate company KPIs, yeah, for sure. And in the past, we had for the procurement area top-down delegated procurement KPIs, yeah. And we changed it in that way. And this is also the acceptance we get from the senior management to do so, to say, okay, the people were a little bit frustrated where the figures coming from and how can I influence and so on. Uh, in my area, for example, we created the purchasing balance scorecard. We really made a whiteboard session with not all of the team members, but some of them and discussed, okay, what is important for you? And one of the perspectives in the balance scorecard is also the employee where we added also some behavioral aspects and important factors from, from the employees. And this is what they see now. They have contributed, they uh, received the survey, they gave their input. And now when I get outside here in our uh, visualization board, they can really see the balance scorecard, meanwhile coming from our BI yeah, uh, in a very automated way, that their input is really now touchable. And this is very important that they see that you're not only asking and then doing different, but really count on the feedback from the team members. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just when you mention when you when I listen to you, Michael, yeah, I think um, uh, what I personally think is is worth to think about is um, is is it the leader to shine, or are you able and are you a leader who is able to let your people shine? Yeah, so that means to challenge them, but as well to give them airtime. Yeah, so to let uh, to let them do the presentation and and uh, let them be on stage whenever it, it is possible. Yeah, I think this is one thing as well, um, which from my point of view um, is a trait um, of a of, of a good leader. Yeah, it's not about me and I'm the hero. It's about the team and the team is 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 the hero. Yeah, fully agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
in the chat. Uh, so to, to all of you who are in the call, and it's more than Michael and me and Victoria. <laughs> and um, yeah, so question, uh, we talked about this case here, um, but, but we're happy as well uh, to discuss, or if, if somebody else likes to share your current situation, what are challenges in your company or in your uh, role currently you see and, and um, things you would like to dis share? Um, and discuss with um, here the audience um, what our approaches, what our experiences. So we're happy uh, to hear as well a little bit about your challenges. Yeah. And again, e either via the chat or if you um, if you here use the share audio and video button, um, then you can um, tell us a little bit more. That would be great. I'm curious. You know, I'm I'm a trainer and facilitator because I like to learn as well something in my trainings and in my sessions. <laughs> yeah, and we already one interesting um, aspect um, here mentioned by Wanda. Yeah, I would be surprised. So, are we the only ones who are Michael who are in the change situation or have challenges? Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, Gabby. Okay, so uh, then let's see. Thank you. Uh, it it often takes might take uh, a second, but now yes, perfect. Hi, Gabby. Hi. Hi. I'm here. Yes. Hi. I'm sorry, I was joining a bit late because I had other meetings to attend as well. But I'm actually um, I'm I'm really uh, at the start for a change. Uh, yeah, change management episode, so to say. Uh, so let me briefly introduce. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm from DSM, and I work in PO, and we are starting our journey on uh, people analytics, and uh, for bringing people analytics into the organization, we are really uh, starting also and putting lots of effort in the change management. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I've been doing lots of research the last couple of uh, weeks on 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 how the approach should look like. Uh, what do we want to bring across uh, together with our COE on talent uh, development? We have identified personas to see, okay, mm -hmm. how can we bring our journey across? And um, yeah, also everybody is talking about we should do it in an agile approach. Uh, well, from my research, I found that, okay, we see, uh, we, 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 we are really interested in using the steps of Cotter. So I'm actually trying to tie all the knots and putting that mm -hmm. in a nice change plan and well that in itself is a challenge <laughs> so i could really use some yeah some feedback some 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 advice some tips and tricks how do i get my people analytics across in my pno organization and even outside the pno organization mm -hmm. Okay. And for me, before I answer uh, that I understand, so when you talk about people analytics, what exactly is the scope of that? I'm asking that because that's a good point. Um, when we design uh, a, a learning program, mm -hmm. uh, we do not just start with the content. That would be a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. We start about, you mentioned the personas, we start about what are the current, what are the future skills needed and then we tailor it to that and, and we link it with the company strategy or department strategy. And then from that, you have the, um, uh, the stuff. And, and with regards to people analytics, what exactly um, are you working there on? What kind of, of analytics? Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah, the, 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 the ultimate goal is to, to become a more insight-driven organization. So based on the data insights that you build your decisions on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in that oh. sense, uh, people analytics yeah, is... is quite of a special topic because of the sensitivity of the data and it's uh, in the PO environment it's it's quite uh, yeah it's it's not that advanced yet it's it's really starting so mm -hmm. um, we we did a lot of pre-work with uh, where we and and where we are working on now is really getting people more yeah so to say data savvy and so we want the people really to start using data in their decisions making use of dashboards yeah. Uh, yeah, learning to read the data, and that's mm -hmm. all going to be part of the learning journey. Okay, yeah. So if I may just share a little bit, what 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 triggers that? Yeah, mm -hmm. 
um, being uh, and uh, before I was or before I focus now on capability development, corporate academies, skill assessments, yeah, so this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and um, before that, I worked uh, more than ten years as a consultant. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you can really argue: Is there anything you can learn from a consultant? <laughs> we all know those stupid jokes <laughs> and what we have to pay. Yeah, but I think there is one thing you can learn from a consultant: that is to think in clear end results. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are the deliverables? Yeah. And from my point of view, the people—it's like with digitalization. A lot of people limit it just to automation. And mm -hmm. do not take the the good old analog stuff into account. Mm -hmm. That means when we talk about analytics, yeah, and and I, I mentioned that because I'm responsible for the 100 uh, consultants in our company to train them. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we have this kind of situation and, and shift as well. Um, I would say um, first. Uh, it needs part of the story, part of the enablement is the classical analytics. So what is the question you're looking for? Because people mm -hmm. say, let's have a market uh, study, but they're not thinking about why are we doing this? Uh, what is the scope and, and what exactly are we looking for? Mm -hmm. And that does not mean uh, you, you can be open and you can learn during the project. But if you have not a clear starting question, a clear hypothesis, mm -hmm. why do I analyze this? Yeah, mm -hmm. what is my dashboard? Then you can have 40 KPI, you can analyze everything, but people get lost and some of them require more and more data, but they never get the clarity. And the yeah. clarity is from my point of view, part of the story um, of analytics, yeah, mm -hmm. is uh, that. Yeah, no, yeah, but that's, I, I, that's really a fair point. It's also how we want to bring our message across. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when when uh, executing analytics, the first question yeah. we always ask, when people come with a question, yeah. we ask them, why do you want to know this? Yeah, what, exactly. What's in it for you? If you have the yeah. answer to this question, what are you going to yeah. do with it? Yeah, yeah. Because if you're not turning it into action, it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So, so that, my, that, that, mm -hmm. that is indeed what, what yeah. we are uh, taking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think Michael knows that. Yeah, my, my classical quote in the trainings is, uh, a fool with a tool <laughs> is still a fool. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, no, no. And I think that to be fair, yeah, when we talk about strategy, category mm -hmm. strategy, sourcing strategy, whatever it is, yeah, marketing strategy, it's easy to have 50 tools and 50 yeah. analysis. I say always, guys, focus. It's better to focus on the on the three key questions you have to answer. Then think about what is the analysis you, you have to conduct? Where do mm -hmm. you get the data? What's the quality assurance? How long does it take? And that's already fine. So, yeah. yeah, I think people, uh, a lot of people get lost in, in too many details and think yeah, it's fancy and intelligent to do more. This is one thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The second recommendation I can do there, there are tools like, and I'm not linked to that company, like Tableau. Yeah. If I have colleagues which are much younger and, and could be uh, my children, yeah. <laughs> so the 20 year old or whatever generation is, they are used, yeah, our analysts, yeah, they are used to work with that kind of data. They are what we see in the lean startups. They are very much data driven. So if you have a company where you have a spread between people like me, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you have the, the younger generation, which has totally different approaches to digital native working with the tools, yeah. Versus experienced people who might be good, but maybe like to delegate that. Yeah, maybe you think about if that is relevant, uh, how to balance that, uh, and maybe your personas will help there. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, to really do that. This, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and then last but not least, I mentioned Tableau. I think one, um, yeah, one of the changes is um, you can still work with business case, business case modeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not only doing the math, it's not only quantitative analysis, that's what the people often underestimate. Yeah. So if you want to sell your case, good old business case modeling, have a financial model, be able to think in that terms, but mm -hmm. as well have qualitative uh, a way and how to sell it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sorry, last but not least, <laughs> uh, if you think about tools like Tableau, I think we're currently switching from, from, from more um, dynamic dashboards. Yeah. So from my point of view, it starts with solid foundation on analytics. Yeah. Then be clear about what is uh, prescriptive analysis and what is predictive analysis. Mm -hmm. Is it just the backward uh, looking at the past or do we have other things, predictive analysis? Yeah. yeah? 
So, this, yeah. so, and I think if, if you have cleared that, then you can really create an exciting story why it is cool and why it is not just looking at the figure, but it is about decision making. It is about telling. Uh, it is about uh, making profound decisions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much yeah. faster, much more integrated. And I think Michael is perfect example here purchasing because purchasing decisions, yeah, if you think about CAPEX or global raw materials, it's technically driven, financial driven, uh, safety driven, quality management driven, political driven. Yeah, so the purchasing department has everything. Michael, with your dashboard, any further recommendations? We had also a very challenging, or we still have a very challenging situation when we are delegating uh, operational tasks, uh, which we have done in the past to our global business service uh, area, yeah, GPS, and mm -hmm. it was also very challenging at the beginning because all the people had fear, yeah, what does that mean for the future and so on, um, and they found a lot of reasons why this will not work, yeah, and the same situation we, and by the way, uh, meanwhile, this is really working in a, in, a, in a very good way. Yeah, and we have really a qualitative and very good support from 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 the teams there. Meanwhile, we have the same discussion when I mentioned before the SAM platform we are going to implement. Uh, it's uh, yeah very sensitive. If on the one hand the people know yeah when we're implementing that in a good manner, that means we, as I mentioned before, free up resources. Yeah, so they are also a little bit afraid what will happen in the future. But this is exactly where we are inviting them yeah, to think about uh, which innovative approaches we can bring to uh, make the role of a procurement guy different and more uh, value add bringing in future. And there are some good ideas already in the pipeline. Some of them are already uh, executed and others are still in within the steam challenges and so on so um, i think actually you stated already a lot you need to make the team part of this journey and uh, convince them of the vision uh, where we should be in two three or five years yeah. and only then you can really uh, make them follow you yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah. and i think it's 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 a blend yeah of of purpose yeah, to have inspiring stories, uh, inspiring future, yeah, which mm -hmm. the people can imagine. So mm -hmm. something which never ends. Uh, and then never underestimate content is king. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can tell everything, but content, please don't forget content. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And for me, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I like, I, I learned to like and accept uh, the agile stuff. Yeah. Uh, more or less, but in the trainings, if you ask how agile is your project, how waterfall, or is it a blend of all? Yeah, I think this is interesting to really sort out what kind of blend do you need. Yeah. Um, and and for me, it's interesting. Uh, I'm a Scrum master, and and I read the, the 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 Scrum books and the Lean Startup. Yeah, it's interesting for me. Yeah, they are all citing Toyota production system. Which is quite something yeah, from uh, qu quite old. Yeah, if you uh, if if you worked on uh, know that, you will know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, interesting for me that there are some roots which are, are quite old in a positive way, uh, but now it's good to put some emphasis because it empowers the people. Um, yeah, but you need all content, uh, then then cooperation, and not to forget, agile is not about speed. Uh, yeah. yeah, it is about requirements. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I, th I think uh, that's what often is, is underestimated. It's about um, requirements. It's not about the ego trip. Yeah, mm -hmm. and for some teams, um, and yeah, for, for it, it's still a challenge. They are still uh, used to work in a hierarchical, hierarchical way, or if you have those ego shooters. Yeah, which try to dominate a team. Uh, so I think there's a lot of things uh, you can do. I, I like um, agile approaches mm -hmm. um, and um, I like them as well because um, it's quite visible what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So That's I like cool. very much the Kanban boards. And I think we use the, the team, Microsoft Teams, yeah, mm -hmm. Surface. We do switch to that as well here in our uh, purchasing academy. Yeah, and with with that, um, maybe you know it already. Uh, with Teams, you can create those Kanban boards. Yeah, you, yeah. you can have in your in your team room the visible Kanban board with mm -hmm. all the the post-its. Yeah. yeah, but you can work with Mural. That's a software. Yeah, or you can yeah. work with with Kanban things. And I think that's interesting to try those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much.
Yeah, thank, thank you very much, Gabi. Uh, we have a few few minutes left. Uh, so, so uh, any other question or anything else you would like to um, discuss to share? Yeah. So, how you are um, approaching the the Corona or the COVID nineteen situation? What what has that an impact or leadership question? And while we're waiting for that, you, you already experienced, I never stopped talking. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think uh, if we talk about unleashed change, if you talk about a transformation, yeah, so again, it needs content, uh, it needs purpose, um, it needs as well visible leadership, yeah, so it needs um, a true empowerment of the people. Markus, yes. Hello, everybody. Marcus again. Hi. Yeah. Um, just one other question to Michael. Um, you mentioned before, I made some notes here. Um, you mentioned before, uh, you, communication is key. And this is something I hear quite often from the management. Um, but what, what I'm interested in, what are the methods you choose to inform your colleagues, your whole troop? Because as I understand it right in the beginning, it's a global company. You're in different areas in the world, the so different time zones. So the typical challenges, let's say. So what you did, was it a video conference? Was it a coffee corner? Was it um, traveling around and giving handshakes? Or what have you done so that the people say, okay, cool, the management are interested in what I'm doing and the management is communicating a lot or the stuff I yeah, know. Yeah. Before, sorry, before Michael answers, yeah, just uh, some homework. As I understood at five o'clock, I do not know how hard the cut will be if we're technically thrown out. Yeah. Uh, so, so just uh, don't be surprised. Yeah. Let's see what happens at five when the when the session is is ending. Uh, but Michael, please answer, and then we see how far we get. I, yeah. I can see there's <laughs> two minutes remaining. No, no, no stress. Just yeah. that everyone is aware, mm -hmm. and, and th there's a no, no pressure, Michael. But would be great if you answer all in two minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we need to differentiate. Uh, talking first about my role uh, directly with my colleagues and with our senior vice president uh, procurement, where we have quarterly or we had. I need to say because let's see how this. Will Will change in future we had in the past for example in 2019 in the year before quarterly meetings yeah which setup do we have here yeah we have our um head of purchasing globally uh, we have four directors responsible for the region south america north america uh, my role is for europe and then we have asia pacific and india yeah so and beside that we have two global roles, yeah. Rudy would have been one of them, yeah. Sorry that it technically has not worked. Rudy is responsible for all the global indirect spend, which concludes resale, transportation, and capex, yeah. And then we have the global raw material area. So we seven met quarterly, yeah, and we tried to do it uh, in the Netherlands, yeah, in Rotterdam, where we have our office uh, for uh, SEM and, and uh, procurement mainly and other functions there. But we also did it uh, in some regions, yeah, also to share presence there. Uh, for example, in February, we have been in York uh, in the US where we have uh, done our three days meeting there. Two days was always internal where we received some information and requirements from, from, from our head, yeah. And on the other hand, we also, and this is also for me a uh, uh, part of empowerment and, and uh, um, giving the team the, the chance to present their initiatives there, the North America team, for example. Last year we were in Brazil, uh, we have already been in China and so on. Yeah, let's see how this will change in future with the travel restrictions. And this were always where we had slots and every, we had a clear agenda and every director has on the one hand presented his ongoing initiatives, his progress uh, regarding the KPI. I think nothing really surprising for you. And we also have been challenged from the other colleagues as well. Yeah, we talked about projects like the Purchasing Academy, how to set up and so on. And now to the second part, how I'm doing with my team. Yeah, My team or my direct reports are spread only over Austria and Germany. Yeah, So I have five direct reports and we did in January, already the third time in a row now, uh, as we call it, a strategy meeting, Yeah, where we are really two days outside and uh, talking about how can we be how can we be better in future? And my starting question is always, yeah, as we discussed uh, with Wanda before, uh, what is the vision? Yeah, and uh, to my guys, how, where do you see us in two years? And for me, it's so important that at least my direct report team has the same vision 
than myself. And, uh, uh, and that's not so easy because writing down a sentence is, is done very quickly, but we all should have the same understanding and especially dealing with uh, transferring all the, the, the operational stuff to GPS or increasing automation with, with, with SAP and other SIM tools means that you have much too much resources and then uh, you need to think about what are you doing with that and w once hence we have agreed on that vision and have the same picture then we are going to nail down what does that mean in terms of of, of measures and initiatives and as axel said already i can confirm meanwhile we're also working with teams and with the kanban boards there to structure a bit the, the workload. So once a year, a strategy meeting where we always have a really good atmosphere and but even challenging discussions because we are all have not the same opinion and that's good. We are also sharing the biggest mistakes from the previous year there. And then from that time onwards, we make our uh, roadmap for the whole year. Yeah. And then we are having on a monthly basis our true fix calls. Yeah. Where we have also a clear agenda and same as we do in the quarterly meetings globally, uh, discussing ongoing initiatives. And usually that's it. As we are now since two months already in the home office, we are doing that on a, on a weekly basis, uh, with, uh, virtual meetings. Um, and web sessions and what I did and I learned that also from HNZ and the training there uh, used a, a software called Klaxoon yeah, to also try to bring whiteboarding sessions uh, and, and uh, when we talk about new ways of working making surveys and rating of, of topics and things like that and this has been done twice in the past and it's also a change and uh, but the feedback from the team is, is quite good and now we are going to delegating that and cascading that structure down also to the team meetings from my direct reports. Yeah. And maybe, Michael, if I'm listening to you, yeah, which I find quite cool if you do this kind of, of feedbacks, is it is anonymous. So some people, some yeah, team members often feel more comfortable if they can use Mentimeter or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I think as a leader, it's quite important. Not everyone uh, feels um, convenient to speak up. Yeah, it's it's good if it is that way, but it's okay and fair to say some people like like to give a feedback in a more indirect way. And I think for a leader, it's a quite important information. Yeah, uh, the best thing is if you have that information. Yeah, uh, and, and and to have that kind of true feedback. Yeah, the direct and the indirect. That's why I like these these tools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so much. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. And thanks for the answer, Michael. Uh, just maybe to challenge you a bit. Um, we did a lot of research internally and ask our um, yeah, purchasing guys, I call them like this, or the other colleagues, um, what do you really want? Do you want that you have a cascade communication and you get maybe two weeks later some kind of similar messages from the big boss? Or do you want a direct communication from the management? Like, a video message, like uh, a live stream, like a weekly or maybe a monthly um, news setup. So just, hey, we're still in a COVID-19 um, situation. We are having these issues, but we have these results and we are happy to succeed this um, success story, whatever. And the answers we got was always, oh yeah, please, management, talk to us. We are not, and you mentioned it before, we are not children, mm -hmm. we are, um, intelligent person we understand what you say we don't need our cascades and some different maybe green lighted stories below so it's just maybe kind of hint or challenge whatever in your direction because i really like that you're meeting so often and i it's good to hear that you say since corona you meet mm -hmm. even weekly and not only monthly or on a year basis so maybe it could be an idea um gives the information direct yeah. to uh -huh. the colleagues it would be Great fine. question and a very direct answer on that. What I talked before is the really the purchasing stuff and the purchasing content. Yeah, I think I mentioned it uh, before already that we have an RHI Sita app in place. And uh, honestly speaking, for me at the beginning, it was a little bit strange. Yeah, I'm not so the social media freak. Yeah, I'm on LinkedIn, but I'm not on Facebook and some other platforms. And firstly, when I saw that and get introduced in that with the likes and so on, I was a little bit conservative. But meanwhile, I need to say that's really a great tool from our uh, implemented from our corporate communications area. And what is really great in our company is that even the CEO and much other executives 
are posting there a lot of information. And this is, I think, exactly the answer to your question. We have a COVID crisis team. We have a, a regional channel. We have a, a HR channel and much more. And, and even our CEO from his home office yeah, has posted the video and gave the message. So what are the challenges right now? What do we need to do uh, to master the crisis and much more? And this is really highly appreciated cool. from the team. And even from the blue color worker who who have that on their iPhone or wherever, so this is really to bring the message where with a high speed to the employees. Absolutely, perfect. Thank you very much yeah. for the answer. Um, yeah, I, I have to go out. Maybe one hint, sir. Not too. a question in the chat. Yes, uh, just maybe you can you can check it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I think we, we overran a little bit the time, um, but but that is fine. Yeah, so uh, I have not seen further hints in the chat. Uh, yeah, at least, yeah, but, but nevertheless. So thank you very much for joining our session. Um, I hope it was uh, interesting for you. Um, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts, your questions. Thank you, Michael. It was a pleasure for me as well uh, to do this together with you and, uh, and, and, um, and with, my, uh, with, with Rudy, so who was at least with us because all we did here, we did together with him. So he's as well heart of, of, our, of our dream team. Um, please feel free to contact Michael, Rudy or me. Yeah, so we are happy to continue the exchange with uh, whoever is interested. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, have a nice day and all the best for you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. So, dann. Uh, dann gehe ich mal raus. Okay.